Hello everyone. On this video, we will be covering U substitution. And of course, we'll just cover this on indefinite integrals because for definite integrals, it's a little bit different. So I want to make sure you understand the indefinite process first before we move on to the definite integral process. All right. So first, let's start with our definition. What if we let f of x represent our function? And what if that's continuous over the range of our other function g of x, where we have a compound function? f of g of x. Okay, so that g of x, what if we decide to make that u? So what if our u equals that g of x? Okay, so that means if we take the derivative, the derivative of u with respect to x is just our g prime of x. Okay. Now, if you remember your differentials, you multiply both sides by d of x or dx, you have du equals g prime of x dx. Okay, so if u equals g of x and du equals g prime of x dx, and g prime of x is continuous over the interval then your antiderivative f of x is the antiderivative of our f of x And this is where the definition comes in. The integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x with respect to x is equal to our integral f of g of x plus c. Now, we already know that we made u equals g of x. Since u is equal to g of x, that gives us the integral of f prime of u. And remember, our g prime of u dx is just du, which is equal to the integral f of u plus c. All right, so don't feel too bad if this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It'll hopefully make more sense when we do a couple of examples. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our first example. All right, so let's say, for example, we want to find the integral or indefinite integral of 6x times negative x squared plus 5 to the seventh power with respect to x. All right, so the first thing I usually do is if we have a constant factor, Go ahead and bring that out to the front. You don't have to, but it's just something that I do to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so we have our 6 times x times negative x squared plus 5 to the 7th power with respect to x. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our u. 
Okay, so what if we let u equal negative x squared plus 5? Okay, so we're going to need that. So I'm going to go draw a little square around it. That means our derivative of u with respect to x is bring down our 2. That gives us negative 2x. So now to find the differential, we multiply both sides by dx. So du is equal to negative 2x dx. Actually, we can get rid of that negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2. So du over 2, and since that's a negative 2, we'll make that negative, equals x dx. Okay, oh, let me move this arrow over a little bit. So this is also something we'll need. All right, so your second step is you want to replace the function with u and du, then integrate. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite our function again I just brought the 6 out times the integral and I'm just going to move the x next to the dx it's all multiplication so it's commutative you can shift it around so you have negative x squared plus 5 to the 7th power times x dx okay so there's a reason I did that is that we already know that this is what we made our u. So this is our u. And our x dx, remember that's equal to negative du over 2. Okay, so now we're going to rewrite it, but instead of all the x terms, we're just going to have the u terms. All right, so you have 6 times the integral of u to the seventh power times negative du over 2. Okay, now from here you get the du by itself, so you get rid of the negative 2, so you factor out that negative 1 half. Okay, so we still have our 6 there, divided by negative 2 times the integral of u to the 7th du. All right, and from here, we just go ahead and we integrate. The same way if you had x to the seventh power, it would be x to the eighth over eight. Here, well, we can go ahead and simplify that. That would just be negative three. So u to the seventh power with respect to u, that would just be u to the eighth power over eight. And of course, it's our plus c since it's an indefinite integral. Okay, so if we bring that 8 out, that would just be negative 3 over 8 times u to the 8th power plus c. Okay, which brings us to our third step. Replace the u. Oh, bring that up some more. Okay, so that would have us at negative 3 over 8. Remember our u is negative x squared plus 5. So that's negative 3 over 8 times negative x squared plus 5 to the 8th power plus c. All right, and that would be our answer. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. 
So we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, so what if we want to find the integral for negative 2x squared times x to the third plus 6 to the fourth power with respect to x? All right, so for this one, I want you to go ahead and press pause and using the process for the previous example, try to solve this one on your own. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and you've already solved this. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, first you have to have your U value. So what if we let u equal x to the third plus 6? Okay. And we're going to need that, so we're going to go ahead and put a little box over it. That means our derivative of u with respect to x is equal to, you have 3x squared. The derivative of a constant is just zero, so that's just 3x squared. And again, we just find the differential, so first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides by dx. So du equals 3x squared dx. Okay. And normally, like I said, I get rid of the constant factor by dividing both sides. So I divide both sides by 3. So our du divided by 3 is equal to x squared dx. And that, once again, we will need. So I'm going to put a little square around it. Okay, so now we go to our second step. Replace function with u and du. Okay, so we have our original function. I'm going to go ahead, just like I did before, and just bring the negative 2 out to the front. So you have negative 2 times the integral. And that x squared, I'm just going to move over here next to the dx. So you have x to the third plus 6 to the fourth power times x squared dx. Okay. And once again, the reason I did that is because we know that this part, the x to the third plus 6, that's our u. And we know our x squared dx, that's our du over 3. All right. So that means we end up with negative 2 times the integral, since that's our u, you have u to the fourth power, times du over 3. Okay. So once again, we want our du by itself. We don't want to divide it by anything. So we go ahead and divide, we'll multiply both sides by 3, over, not multiply, but we can go ahead and factor out that 3. So you have negative 2 over 3 times the integral of u to the fourth du. Okay, so just like if you had x to the, the integral of x to the fourth, that would be x to the fifth over five, this is the same thing. You have negative two over three times u to the fifth over five plus c. Okay, so we can go ahead and factor that 5 out. So 5 times 3 would give us 15. So that's negative 2 over 15 times u to the fifth plus c. Okay. So once you do that, you go to your third step, which is just 
replacing the U. Let's move that up a little more. There we go. So we go ahead and replace our U. So that gives us negative 2 over 15. And our u is x to the third plus 6. So that's times x to the third plus 6 to the fifth power plus c. All right, so that's our integral. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, so let's say for this example, you want to find the integral, the square root of 2x minus 1 with respect to x. Okay, now on this one, it would help to remember that the square root of 2x minus 1, you can rewrite that as 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. All right, so what I want you to do on this one, once again, is I want you to press pause and try to solve this one on your own. All right, so assuming you've pressed pause and worked this one out, let's go ahead and verify your answer. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this as the integral of 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power dx. So just removing the square root symbol. Okay, so our first step. What if we let u equal 2x minus 1? Okay, well, we're going to need that, so we're going to go ahead and put a little square over it. Then that means that the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to 2. Derivative of 2x is just 2, and the derivative of a constant is just 0, so that disappears. Okay, so we find our differential where du is equal to 2 dx. So we just multiply both sides by dx. Okay, but to get our dx by itself, we go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So we have du over 2 equals dx. Okay, so once again, we're going to need that. All right, so now we can go ahead and start solving it. Okay, so you have the integral of 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power dx. We already know that that 2x minus 1, that's our u. And our dx our du over 2. Okay, so that means we're going to end up with, oh, forgot to put our second step here. Replace function with u and du. Okay, so if we replace our function with u and du, we have u to the 1 half power times du over 2. Okay, But we want that du by itself, so we factor out that 2 in the denominator. So that ends up being 1 half times the integral of u to the 1 half du. Let me clean up that one half power a little bit. There we go. All right, so from there we go ahead and integrate. 
Okay, so you have one half times u to the one half plus one. So one half plus one is just one half plus two over two. So that's u to the three over two power divided by three over two plus c. Can't forget our trusty plus c. All right, so to simplify this, you have your one half. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal, so if you multiply the denominator by 2 over 3 and the numerator by 2 over 3, the denominator would just become 1. So that becomes 2 over 3, u to the 3 halves power, plus c. Okay, so of course our 2's cancel out. And we are left with 1 third u to the 3 halves power plus c, where we go to our third step and just replace the u. Okay, so that gives us 1 third 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves power plus c. All right. So for the next example, I'm going to take our original problem and I'm going to tweak it just a little bit to where you have to slightly change your approach. All right. So it's just a little tweak on our original problem. OK, so if you're still writing this, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. All right, so let's say, for example, what if we have, instead of just the square root of 2x minus 1, what if we wanted to find the integral of x times the square root of 2x minus 1 with respect to x? Okay, so it's just a little bit different. And sometimes with integrals, those little changes mean a whole lot. They can change up how you approach it. All right. So with this, we're going to start off the same way we did. We're going to let our u equal 2x minus 1. Okay, and again, we're going to use that. So we're going to go draw a little square around it. And our derivative of u with respect to x is going to equal 2. Now to find the differential, you have our du equals 2 dx. Divide both sides by 2. We have du over 2 equals dx. Okay, so, so far, it's just like the previous example. Not much has changed. But you will notice that if you try to replace the u and the du, you're just left with the integral of x times square root of u and du over 2. You have that x. You can't differentiate with respect to u as long as you have a variable that's not a u. So we have to get rid of that x. But the thing is, you can't just get rid of it. You have to kind of find a way to make it a function of u. Okay, this way, when we differentiate with respect to u, everything's at its, as it should be. All right. So we're going to take what we made our u equal to. And we're going to use that to our advantage. Okay, so since. We want all factors to be differentiable with respect to you. We're going to find our u equals 2x minus 1. We're going to add 1 to both sides. 
So we end up with u plus 1 equal 2x. Now if we divide both sides by 2, we end up with x equals u plus 1 over 2. Okay, so not only can we replace this 2x minus 1 with a u, not only can we replace our dx with a factor that's u, that has u in it, we can also replace this x with u, a u term. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to rewrite our integral. So the integral of x, and instead of square root of 2x minus 1, just going to put 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power dx. Okay, so we have the integral. Remember our x, draw a little arrow, that's u plus 1 over 2. We have u plus 1 over 2 times, remember that's our u. So our 2x minus 1 is u, so that's u to the 1 half power. And our dx, remember that's du over 2. That's times du over 2. All right, so all of our denominators, we have a 2 here and a 2 there. So if we combine those, it's just 4. 2 times 2 is 4. We can factor that 1 fourth out. Okay, so that's going to equal 1 fourth times the integral of u plus 1 times u to the 1 half power du. All right, so it's looking a little bit better. Okay, but we want to get rid of all these parentheses and everything else, so we're going to go ahead and distribute that u to the 1 half. Okay, so that's going to just move my equal sign over a little bit. So that's going to equal 1 fourth times the integral u to the 1 half times u to the first power is just u to the 3 halves. So I have u to the 3 halves. Don't really need that little parenthesis there, but I'm going to do it anyway. Plus 1 times u to the 1 half power is just u to the 1 half power du. Okay, so we no longer have multiple factors. We have all just separate terms. So now we just integrate each term like we normally would with respect to u. Okay, so you have 1 fourth times u to the 3 over 2 plus 1 is just u to the 5 over 2. So u to the 5 halves over 5 halves plus u to the 1 half power. Take that 1 half plus 1, that's just 3 over 2. You have u to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 plus c. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting closer. So once again, if you multiply the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of that fraction, so if you multiply it by 2 over 5 and 2 over 5, the denominator will become 1. So that's 1 fourth times 2 over 5 u to the 5 half power plus multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 over 3. You get 2 over 3 times u to the 3 halves plus c. All right, so now that we have all of this taken care of, we go ahead and replace our u's and distribute our 1 fourth. Okay, so replace u and distribute our 1 fourth. Okay, so 1 fourth times 2 over 5, that's 2 over 20, which is just 1 tenth once you simplify it, so it's 1 tenth. Instead of u to the 5 halves, that's just 2x minus 1. 
to the 5 half power plus 1 fourth times 2 over 3 is 2 over 12, which is just 1 over 6 once you simplify it. And that's 2x minus 1 to the 3 half power plus c. All right, so that is our final answer. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. All right, so let's say, for example, you wanted to find the integral of x, square root of x plus 2 with respect to x. Okay. Now, if you had just the square root of x plus 2, you can just make that x plus 2 to the 1 half power and go from there. But you have that x right there on the outside, so it's a little more work. All right, so what I want you to do is go ahead and press pause, and I want you to work this one using the same process from the previous example. All right. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've already pressed pause and worked this one out. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so just like before, we're going to let our u equal x plus 2. Okay, and we're going to need that, so we're going to go ahead and put a little square over it. So we take our derivative of u with respect to x, that's just going to equal 1. Derivative of x is just 1, so and the derivative of a constant is 0, so we end up with just 1. So if we take our differential, multiply both sides by dx, then du is just equal to 1 times dx, or just dx. Okay, so we see there that one's pretty straightforward. Okay, and again, if you try substituting these, it wouldn't work out because you still have that x. Okay, but we see here that since u is equal to x plus 2, if we subtract 2 on both sides, that means that x is equal to u minus 2. Okay, so we have our x plus 2 that we change to a u term. We have our dx that we change to a u term. And we have our x that we change to a u term. So we should be able to differentiate by u after doing that. All right, so let's go ahead and keep on. I'm going to go just rewrite our original square root of x plus 2 dx. Okay, so that's going to equal the integral of x. Remember, that's u minus 2, so replace the x with u minus 2. Now, remember, our x plus 2, that's our u. So our square root of u, we can just make that u to the 1 half power. And our dx, remember, that's just equal to du. So we don't have anything to divide with our du since it just came right out to equal dx. And we write our du there. All right. So now what we're going to do is just distribute our u to the 1 half. So we don't have multiple factors there. So u to the 1 half times u. Remember, that's u to the 1 half times u to the first power. That's just the integral of u to the 3 half minus 2 times u to the 1 half is just 2u to the 1 half power du. All right, so from there, we go ahead and we integrate both sides. OK, 
Okay, so u to the 3 halves plus 1, that would be u to the 5 halves over 5 halves. Uh oh, about to put a plus there for some reason. Minus 2 times u to the 1 half is just u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. Let me clean up that 3 a little bit. Looks a little bit messy there. To the 3 over 2 power. Okay, and plus C. Okay, so if we multiply this numerator and denominator by the reciprocal, so that's 2 over 5, we end up with 2 over 5u to the 5 halves minus 2. Same thing here, multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 thirds. 2 thirds u to the 3 half power plus c. All right, so once again, we replace u. So that means we will end up with 2 fifth times x plus 2 to the 5 half minus 4 over 3, 2 times 2 is 4 over 3, times x plus 2 to the 3 halves plus c. And that is your correct answer. All right, now, this is your correct answer. But I want to show you a little something you might run across. Because what if you decide, okay, I want to, this is my answer, I'm going to use an app, or I'm going to use the internet and look up and see if I have the right answer. And you look it up, and it's a completely different answer. And you're sitting back going, oh my God, I don't know how I got the wrong answer. I did everything right. It could still be the right answer and look completely different. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now remember, this is still correct. So if you got this, you are 100% right. But let's say if we want to have our like denominators here. So we multiply this one by 3 over 3. So that gives us 6 over 15. And our x plus 2 to the 5 halves power, let's say if we make that x plus 2 to the 3 half power times x plus 2 to the 2 over 2 power. Because if you combine those two, that's x plus 2 to the 5 halves power. Minus, multiply both of these by 5, you have 20 over 15 times x plus 2 to the 3 halves power plus c. Okay, so now out of our numerator, we can actually factor out a 2. Okay, so you have 2 over 15, because you can factor 15 out of both of those denominators. And you can also factor an x plus 2 to the 3 halves power. Okay, so what does that leave us? Well, we know 2 times 3 would give us 6 in our numerator. So you have 3, and we have our x plus 2 to the 2 over 2 power. So that's x plus 2 minus, here we factored out our 15 in the denominator. And we know that we factored out a 2, so that will leave us with a 10 here, because 10 times 2 will give us our 20. And we factored out the x plus 2 to the 3 halves power, so that leaves us with our plus c. Okay, so if we go ahead and distribute that, we will end up with 2 over 15 times x plus 2 to the 3 halves power times, you have 3x if we distribute that, so you have 3x plus 6 minus 10 will give us minus 4 plus c. 
Okay, now this is also the correct answer. Just in a different form. Okay, so once again, if you happen to use an app or search the internet to verify that your answer is right, and you see something completely different, it doesn't mean your answer is wrong. It just means that it's a possibility that the answer that is on the internet or the app showed is just in a different form. So that means these two are both correct, just different forms. All right, so hopefully this made sense and I will see you on the next video.